Hello and welcome to Scale War Machines and another edition of the Airbrush Show. Here at the Airbrush Show we like to review all the latest airbrushing tools and tech and we try to look at as many brands as possible. So here we go, this is the first package. There's one manufacturer of airbrushes that's been noticeably absent on the Airbrush Show. Well, I'm pleased to say that we've rectified that situation with a massive order from the Badger Airbrush Company of the United States. If you watched our previous videos you would have seen this massive haul of airbrushes that came in during the lockdown. They all came from Badger in the USA and they came in two to three batches and we were very pleased to receive them. Now the story of how we bought them and how much they cost is worthy of a video. All we can say is we're dead chuffed to have Badger Airrushes on the show and we hope you really enjoy this episode. So where did it all start? Well it began with a series of emails that landed in the Scale War Machines inbox from Badger. Those emails detailed a special offer to celebrate the 56th year of production of Badger Airbrushes. It was called the Happy Birthday 56 Celebration. This is a rerun of previous special offers that the company has announced in past years. You'll find out about it if you're on their mailing list or via their social media pages. One thing we would say about Badger compared to other competitors is their website is less well developed and it can be, in our experience, harder to find out information about their products. However, their Facebook page is an especially useful source of information. Badger know about the shortcomings with their website and we think that they are in development with a whole new customer facing website. The deal was that as part of the 56th birthday celebration offer you could choose any of their airbrushes from their vast range and it is a big range of airbrushes. They would all be $56 with around $33 shipping. There's a lot to choose from. There's all sorts of different ranges, including their Renegade range, their Chromes and their Sotars. It was really quite difficult to know what to buy. So in the end, we took a bit of a guess and ordered these three airbrushes. The first order was placed on the 13th of January 2020. And that was for an Extreme Sidewinder, which is their side feed version of the Extreme Patriot. An Extreme Patriot. 105 and a Renegade Spirit which again is a side feed airbrush and you can see the prices there. That first order came to 267 US dollars and you can see the exchange rate at the time was 212 pounds and 71 pence for three airbrushes. And after thinking about it a little bit more we decided to order two more. Here you can see the next order and that one was for two airbrushes that was a Sotar and a Chrome and that came with the exchange rate to £141.64. As part of the offer, if you ordered more than three airbrushes, you could get a rebate. If we'd ordered all five in the same order, we would have had a bigger rebate, but we got $33 US back. That worked out to a credit in our bank account of £26.23. It was very exciting to see that the airbrushes were sent. The first one was sent on the 8th of July, 2020. Now if you noticed on the PayPal receipt, it stated very clearly as part of the offer that you had to wait up to six months. In fact, there are a set of rules that you had to obey and one of them was that you had to be patient. Exercise rule number one. It was really exciting therefore to see the first shipment going in July. Also via the social media pages of Facebook pages of Badger, there were regular updates about the amount of airbrushes that had been ordered, the quantity that had been manufactured, and the amount of orders that were still awaiting fulfillment. And here you can see the number of total orders. Furthermore, there were regular social media posts showing them all being packaged up and being sent. Around this time in June, we still hadn't received any of the first airbrushes, but there was another offer, an opportunity to buy a special gold limited edition Sotar. That came in at $129 or so, about £108. We couldn't resist that, so we added that to the order as well. Once again, into our inbox, a posting confirmation email arrived. Then, after a long wait, the packages began to arrive. Now, this is the first order, but this actually arrived second. And the reason it took so long 
was it was trapped in customs because of the coronavirus outbreak. In fact, after it was posted in July, we didn't hear anything about this particular order for many, many months. And eventually, it was released and arrived. So here they are. There's the Spirit airbrush on the left with the side feed. Here you can see the Sidewinder. And what's noticeable is the high roller trigger. Again, that's at the side feed. And this one is the Extreme Patriot 105 with a standard gravity feed cup. These are all great airbrushes. They looked fantastic. We were overjoyed to get them after such a long wait and they will feature in future airbrush show films. What we'll be looking at today came with the second batch that actually arrived first and this is what we'll be looking at today, the SOTAR 2020. This was an airbrush that immediately caught our eye. It was different, felt distinctive, and has a very different ergonomic feel from all the other airbrushes, or indeed any airbrushes we've used before. As part of the offer, all the airbrushes were shipped in these soft leather pouches with a drawstring, and that's how the SOTAR arrived. These in effect are the two airbrushes that we ordered second in late January, the SOTAR and the Chrome. These were held in UK customs and there was an additional £15.32 to pay. Let's take a detailed look then at the SOTAR 2020. You've got the airbrush, a small instruction leaflet and a little Allen key wrench for the paint volume limiter which you'll find at the end of the airbrush. There's also a little customer service card with details about how to get support and the all important Facebook group because that really is important and where you'll get the most information about Badger products for the time being. Otherwise the leather pouches are really handy and a good way to store the airbrushes in a drawer for example. The first thing that kind of strikes you is firstly the compactness of this airbrush but also that it ships with these little rubber covers for the nozzle and for the paint cup. Those are quite important because on the SOTAR the needle is exposed. It points right out from the tip and you have to be very careful not to damage it. Other things that are noteworthy is you get a little stubby sort of trigger that's circular and then inside you can see some of the detail of the construction. It clearly has a coating on it, this black coating, and it appears to have some sort of brass or nickel alloy construction. There's engraving on the side which says the words you can see here and carries the brand name of the airbrush. You get a fairly simple photocopy that explains the parts list and how to use the SOTAR and here again it's not flashy or elaborate it's just simple and functional and also you can see that it carries a warranty with the name of Ken at Badger and you'll see Ken if you follow them on Facebook. Ken regularly does a feature called lazing on a Sunday afternoon and that was very useful to understand more about their products. So what are the first thoughts about the SOTAR? Well it looks well constructed. What is immediately obvious is how near the paint cup is to the needle. That is really what sets this airbrush apart. At the other end you'll find that there's a paint volume limiter that you can set to various settings and that limits the rearward travel of the needle. You'll see that in very many different designs of airbrush. One neat feature is that you can zero the paint flow limiter either in the minimum or maximum position using the hex allen key provided. One notable feature we really like is there's a small ring that can be tightened or loosened to adjust the tension on the trigger. You can see it just here. There you can see the travel on the trigger. And you can access the locking nut on the needle holder quite easily. If you loosen the nut you can release the needle from the rear of the airbrush. It's worth noting that some Badger airbrushes come with the needle retracted and so you will need to release it and push it forwards to get correct operation. You'll notice underneath by the airline hose there's a little plastic insert which is designed to reduce fatigue on your fingers when you hold the airbrush and it is actually a very handy little addition. You can undo or tighten the finger guard using the supplied allen key. Other than that it feels sturdy and well made. Since we filmed this we've used the airbrush quite extensively and that black coating has proved to be very durable. Badger is a small American company 
and their airbrushes come in at different price points. This is really the top of their range in terms of detail painting. But we did notice some imperfections, for example on the finish of the airbrush here you can just see by the trigger there's some sort of mark or smudge in the coating. It's perhaps not quite as refined as some of the other manufacturers. That doesn't bother us at all, all we care about is how the brush sprays not the finish. In order to get it spraying we attached a quick disconnect which converts it to the standard 1 8 hose connector. Here are some close-ups of the nozzle and needle and you can see that you will need to be careful to protect it. Basically if you get into the habit of using the rubber cover it's very easy to preserve the life of these delicate parts. In order to give it a first test we just use this little um, Revel 148 Super Cobra. It's a bit of a beta model really, test piece. We'd already done some spraying on it and then we decided to use the Sotar just to test its capability at spraying camouflage. And we loaded it up with a new paint brand for us, the Mission Models paints, with a little bit of their own brand thinner. Straight away you see that the Sotar is almost pen-like in its operation. It's very, very nice to use, especially for detailed work. The fact that your finger is so close to the paint cup and the paint cup is so close to the subject makes it a really smooth and easy process to paint detail. And that was the whole design of this airbrush. You can really get right up close to a subject. There's great visibility over the top of it or to the side, and it really is extremely precise. What we would say is all of these airbrushes and most airbrushes we've tested are capable of extremely fine lines and this is no exception. Now we're not entirely used to this paint brand but it did a great job straight out of the box as did the paints. Really in terms of fine lines it's knowing what paint to use and how much to dilute it and also what pressure dictates it but it was immediately obvious using this airbrush for the first time that it's a very fine detailed airbrush capable of extremely fine lines. But because 2020 is such a memorable year, we couldn't resist getting the gold limited edition 2020 year of the Sotar airbrush. That arrived in December and on opening the package you can see it came with a special certificate of appreciation and authenticity and this is number 37 of the limited edition run of 200. This will make a great addition next to its little sister airbrush, the black Sotar. Here you can see what we went for packaging outwardly is exactly the same but inside is this little golden jewel noticeably different in terms of appearance in that several of the items that were kind of silvery are black on this and of course the exterior is gold and there's also that engraving 2020 year of the Sotar. What better way to remember a very strange year than having a golden airbrush? Now, there are some interesting detail points about the gold Sotar compared to the black Sotar. Yes, it comes with the same plastic components like the cap for the paint cup and the nozzle protection and the little finger rest at the base of the airbrush. But what's interesting is that the trigger angle is different. You'll notice on the gold Sotar that the trigger is roughly the same height but it's canted a bit more forwards. It's a little bit nearer the paint cup and the angle is markedly different. We'll show you this by comparing it with the black Sotar. Also there's some slight differences in manufacturing. You can just see there's a slight difference in the paint cup especially around the area where the needle travels through it. We're just going to put this down to little tweaks in design and improvements that you expect from any manufacturing company but it's interesting to note the differences. What we'd say is the trigger angle on the gold one is definitely better. Having that little bit more of an aggressive slant on it means that the purchase of your finger on that trigger is even better. If there were to be one criticism of the black Sotar it's that conceivably because it's quite upright and it's got a circular trigger your finger could arguably slip off that a little bit. This improvement really changes that and negates any danger of your finger slipping off the trigger. In order to test this one out then, bearing in mind essentially it's the same airbrush but with some slight tweaks, we mixed up a bit of AK Interactive Black Primer with some thinners and set about doing some tests of detailed painting. First of all you can see that it's kind of maximum paint spread but this is an airbrush that isn't really designed for 
base coats or covering a whole model. This is designed for picking out intricate details, but nevertheless it sprays really well and both airbrushes atomize paint extremely well. The fact that the needle is exposed means you can remove any paint buildup or paint tip drying as some people call it. It's quite easy just to pick it off or clean it off with a brush. Here are the detail shots to show just what the SOTAR 2020 is capable of. We decided to post shade our test piece, this Sherman hull that we've used in countless videos. It was painted with acrylics, a mixture of black and brown. And here again we're still getting used to this airbrush but it was really a joy to spray. It was great at picking out all these little details in terms of post shading, trying to trace panel lines and features on the structure. It really did excel at that. But if you're looking for a fine super detail airbrush then the SOTAR 2020 is a great choice. We've really enjoyed using it ever since we got it. Both of them are pretty much the same in terms of usage. We're sure that the Badger will update the normal SOTAR 2020 with the same features on the gold one. But in terms of price, we're just going to quickly give you a price breakdown. So the question is how much did it all cost and how much did each airbrush cost? Here are all the figures in terms of what was paid including customs and rebates and so on for all the airbrushes. We got six airbrushes in total and that came to £472.96. That works out at £78 each. The retail price of all these airbrushes is considerably more than that. The retail price for the SOTAR for example is around £140 approximately. So getting these airbrushes at this price making use of the deal was just fantastic. And for £78 which is what it came to both of these airbrushes are fantastic. They are easily worth their normal retail price and we can't recommend these airbrushes highly enough. If like us you're kind of hesitating and not sure about these airbrushes because there's not a whole load of information out there, rest assured that they're really good, excellent for detailed work, easy to use, they just feel great in the hand. And the SOTARs are extremely good, well made airbrushes. Hopefully you found that useful and you've enjoyed watching this video. We're all glad that 2020 is behind us. We've got a fantastic limited edition gold 2020 SOTAR and a black one with a special engraving that 2020 was indeed the year of the SOTAR. Thanks for watching and bye.